He's never been an informant, wasn't interested. Mr. Bumblebee regular. But now he's on remand and he's looking for a short sentence. He says he's got something good for us. It's wonderful our memories improve the closer they get to going down. Flannery, sir. What's he doing here? This is acting D.I. Deakin. If you've got something to say, I want to hear it. This is supposed to be confidential. I've told the men here it's about my case. You give us something useful, we'll keep it to ourselves. Let's hear what you've got to say first. It's a betting shop. They've been watching it. Watching the cash pickups. Who's that? Flannery, we've driven a long way. Names, places. It's on your patch, the Hoxton Road. I don't know when it's due to happen, but it's happening soon. Who's doing? Well, I'm a bloke called Desmond Riley. Des Riley, do me a favour. He's in trouble. Means the money. You've got to shoot him. Where did he get a gun? I tell you if I knew. Des Riley couldn't take a photo, let alone a shot at someone. He'll have to do better than this, Flannery. You must be looking at a long stretch. Alibi collapse, does it? Do you want these blocks or not? I don't want to spend two weeks watching a betting shop while you walk away from the old Bailey with a suspended. Who's the arm? I don't know his name. I think you're just trying to keep us sweet until you come up for sentencing. Look, I'm taking the risks. There's loads of blocks in here with knives. We need details, Flannery, if you want us to follow this up. He runs a garage in the Askill Road. Atwoods. Oh, very original. You're making this up as you go along, aren't you? I don't need this. I knew it was a lousy idea. We have to be sure. Look, I've told you everything I know. Right, sir. Yeah. How bad is it? Well, handgun. Possibly discharged twice. One bullet caught two of the guard in the arm. Right, any descriptions? Oh, plenty, most of them different. But how many of them were there? Two. One with a handgun and one with a scaffolding pole. Right. And how did they go? Well, I got uh, a grey Metro or a white Honda Civic. Right. And no gun left here? Nothing as yet. End of the robbery squad, get on board. Your guess. I've had dealings with Riley for five or six years now. He's been clean all that time and he's been very useful. And you don't want to lose a good informant? He runs a club, he'd never even do a job, let alone with shooters. Anybody can get desperate. <laughs> If Des got desperate, he'd hide in a corner till it was all over. Flannery's information holds up. We've had talk of weapons coming out of Atwood's garage for months. We were about to mount a knobbo as it is. Some then wreck Des Riley's grub store, so they get a no hope like Flannery to fit Riley up. It happens to snouts all the time. Doesn't mean we don't follow it up. But what are we going to do? Mount an open-ended surveillance on the bookies? I don't want you wasting any time on this house. All clear for you now, sir. Goodbye. If we're going to let this one go, I want to clear it with a DCI when he gets back. You all right, mate? Yeah, just twisting my ankle, I think. Yeah. I mean, they came around that corner doing a turn. Right. Sir, you all right? Sure? Sir Oscar from 171. Hey, Rich. Yeah, we've got an accident. P.I. Zora Lane. One male, head injuries, conscious, ambulance required. Received. All right, mate. Let's get you warm. Yeah, they just came round that corner, almost killed me. They? Yeah, there was another one driving. He's run off up there. He even took his bag with him. I would have gone after him, but my ankle. Hmm. Uh, the one who ran off, could you give me a description? Yeah, no problem. Yeah, Oscar, 171. Ambulance is on its way, Reg. Yeah, the robbery this morning, the car that was used. Is it a blue metro? That's possible. Yeah, could you inform CID, please, that I may have the vehicle here, plus a possible suspect? Yeah, they've wedged the door with the scaffolding pole. 
And did they get any of this? Yeah, one bag. About 4,000 quid. What a mess. They weren't exactly professionals, were they? DCI is still that conference, isn't it? Yeah, and Cadream's paging Chris Deakin. He's doing a prison interview with Flannery. He's due back about six. But Alistair Gregg was doing that. Flannery's a bumblebee arrest. So they're doing it together? <laughs> Gregg will enjoy that. Right, well, we'll follow this up until robbery squad can take over. <laughs> The bullet passed through the muscle of his upper arm and to the side of his chest. Is he in danger? I don't think so. Your colleague was very lucky. The bullet's lodged in his ribs. He's going into theatre now. No chance of speaking to him today, then, is there? Yeah, a car was reported stolen yesterday in Kent. Yeah, it's got to be our one. You recognise him? Well, not so they clean him up. Well, what about Speedy Gonzalez over there? Did he see the other man? Yeah, he said he was white, about six foot, heavy build, wearing a donkey jacket, carrying a blue hold on. Yeah, that matches most of our descriptions. Well, you better go in the ambulance, Rod. You stay here till they finish, Reg. All right, Sarge. I don't want to lose Riley just because of some prison gossip. Take it right here. Well, so there's a new shortcut. Might as well knock this on the head now. There's is usually at this club. Just here. The bankruptcy. The auction's on Monday. Anybody can get desperate. He never said anything to me. He said business was booming. Well, somebody's at home. I'm, I'm going to nip up and take a look. If he's there, I want a private chat with him for about ten minutes, all right? All right, I'll check out Atwoods. We'll then we get a search warrant. Des? Des? Who's that? Chris Deakin. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, I was just passing, saw so the place was boarded up. Wondered what was going on. Clearing your desk, are you? Why didn't you tell me? Because it wasn't going to happen, that's why. One lousy creditor did all this. Well, maybe I could have helped. It wouldn't be the first time I've had a talk with someone for you, would it? <laughs> that was different. It wouldn't have worked this time. We owed you a short of money. I owed money. People owed me money. Didn't get any better. People have been saying you've been looking around. Maybe you're thinking of doing a blag yourself. <laughs> me, I wouldn't know where to start. That's what I told them. But maybe you've heard something, eh? About a bookies, perhaps? Not a thing. I don't know, I haven't had many customers lately, have I? <laughs> Mal Erickson, long time no see. That's all I need. I got concussion. Been busy? Don't you ever leave a man in peace? I just had a car smash. Oh, that's right, you're on your way home from the hectic day at the armed robbery business. What's he on about? Has he been on the head and all? You were found in a car identified from the scene of a robbery. Scaffolding and gloves in the back. It was a stolen car as well. I wasn't driving. Who was? <laughs> Got away then, did he? I must caution you, you do not have to say anything unless you wish to do so, but what you say may be given in evidence. <laughs> Book it in for a proper look. Uh, yeah, what about next week? Monday? Yeah, okay. 
Did you do any feeling as well? Yeah, for say a bargain. Is there anywhere around here I can get myself a drink? Nah, not anymore. What, what's your name? Uh, nah, it's okay. If you say it's alright, I'll not bother this time. Thanks anyway. I'm looking at armed robbery. I mean, what have I got to lose? About attempted murder on top. Ah, <laughs> you never make that stick. I was never carrying a gun. Even your witnesses will remember that. And when we tell him you refused to give us the name of the man who did fire the gun? Well, he told me it was imitation. So what? I've got no form for shooters. There's a man in the operating theatre down there. They're taking a bullet out of his chest. You'll go down for that. I never fired no gun. You need help, Mel. Give us a name. And don't think about it too long. We won't be writing to any judges if he gets away. <sighs> Des Riley. Not your dear, is it, pal? Have a word, Chris. Who the hell's this? You said you were alone. It's a friend of mine, Alistair Desri. Oh, don't be an idiot, Des. <laughs> come on, come on, come on. Just give us the gun, we'll sort it out, then. No, it's all got too serious for that. Nothing's that serious. <laughs> well, you just take the gun, chuck it into the property store, say thank you very much. A bit of help with the name of the armor. We'll wrap it up nicely. <laughs> It's just a firearms offence, Dez! We'll take it down a couple of notches, make it tape. I've used this. I bloody shot someone. Oh, yeah. I'm Riley's co handler. Only the paperwork, though. Deacon brought him over when he joined us. What's his address? Well, his home address, yeah. Well, he lives on the Frickwold Street with his wife. Well, she's hard work, I tell you. But he's got a club in Cheatham Road, near the Jasmine Allen. You know uh, Rockwell Snooker Club? What, you reckon he's got a bit on the size? Well, I wouldn't blame him. When a man's in trouble, Rod, there's no place like home. It was Matt Larrickson. He talked me into it and said it would be a pushover. How long have we known each other? You know nothing's a pushover. <laughs> I know it now, don't I? They've ruined the lock, ruined everything. Face it, Des. If you can't lock us in, we're going to follow you when you go. Hang on. Let's go and have a word with you. Hello, Mrs. Riley. Is your husband home? No, he's not here. Can we come in? Who's your friend? It's a detective Sergeant Pierce. Well, where's Chris Deacon? This is about something else, Mrs. Riley. Charlie, come in. Thank you, sir. Remain in a state of virtual suspended animation for minutes, sometimes for hours. What? What's all this big heavy macho stuff for? Oh, the bastards have even cut that off. Why did they do that? You're making things worse every second. Shut up, I'm trying to think. So when did they finally foreclose on you, Des? Huh? Oh, uh... Monday last. All I needed was 3,000. Now look at it. Businesses are going under all the time. It's the way it is. I just want to start again, you know. Leave it all behind. Oh, don't tell me. You're going to set up in domestic bliss with Jenny. It's Jimmy. Well, if you go short, she can always ply a trade. She knows a bit on the side. Ginny Sharn, Lady of the Night. Yeah, yeah, I think I do. Leave her out of it, Chris. You know, Des, 
you've still got a chance. You helped us put Atwood in the frame. Ericsson as well. Yeah, yeah. The judge will know you've helped us before. You just got desperate, Des, and did something stupid. <laughs> Listening to Mal Ericsson, that was the stupidest thing I've ever done. I didn't want this. He told me to carry it. He said it was a starting pistol. But I'll go on your field. If that bloke's dead, nothing will make any difference. Don't go thinking the worst, Des. It might not be that bad. I'll spend the rest of my life inside. <laughs> I just can't handle that. Sit down. Look, am I allowed to know what all this is about? I want to speak to him in connection with an armed robbery earlier this afternoon. Yeah, but what's that got to do with Des? He robbed a betting shop on the Hoxton Road. <laughs> Des? Mm. Armed robbery? I mean, do me a favour. Well, they've crashed their getaway vehicle and we've arrested one of them. And he's named your husband. Look, I really do think you've got the wrong man. And I'm already late. Um, what did you mean when you said earlier that he was clearing all his things from his club? He's gone bankrupt. They've had the receivers and we'll be lucky to keep this place. Dad's never told us anything about that. Yeah, well, he didn't really even admit it to himself. And did he say anything to you about going away or a dress he might Look, have? Look, he doesn't really speak to me about anything anymore. Billy! Please, your Listen, do you mind if I take my jacket off? It's getting hot in here. Okay. Hey, you should have said you had one of these. Yeah, well, we're not on the same side anymore, remember? Who cares? So, Mrs. Riley, you've no idea where your husband might go if he was in some sort of trouble? Well, he wouldn't come to me, that's for certain. You mean there's someone else? If that's what you like to call her. And do you know who she is? You see, I think he thinks I'm a bit dim. But I'm not. So are you going to give us a name? Well, I suppose I've got nothing else to lose have I except my marriage. Well, he's hardly doing you any favours by the looks of it, is he? Jenny hmm? Sharman. She's a uh, working girl. She probably thinks Des is going to set her up for a life of luxury. With her history, you've probably got her address on file somewhere. Yeah. All right. Yes, thanks. Thanks. Come on. Ginny Sharman. She's not here. Who wants her? DC Skates is DS Pierce of Sun Hill. And what do you want with Ginny now? Is she working? I told you. She's out. Well, you don't mind if we come in, have a look for ourselves, do you? Excuse me. We need to talk to her. It's important. Oh, Look, love, if you know where she is, we really would appreciate it if you told us. What have you people ever done to help me? Well, things can get very difficult for girls in your line of work. Forget it. How old are you? Pardon? Where's Ginny? She's got a call back half an hour ago. Well, from Des Riley. Someone like that. So, uh, they got something arranged, eh? They're going on holiday. It's not illegal, or is it now? Where? I don't know, Morocco, Marrakesh. It's so clean for them. Leaving tonight? Yeah, except they've missed their flight. Ginny's going frantic, she packed the car, and he just didn't turn up. Well, didn't she go looking for him? He rang, she grabbed her things and went. And where's she meeting him? Well, why's she going to tell me? What sort of car was it? I don't know. Just why? Right, check for paperwork. Yeah. I want a description of the car and I want to know what airport they're going from. Des! You in there? Ginny! I'll explain. Have you got everything in the car? Who's these two? I just want you to help me tie them up. Hello, Ginny. Des? Haven't seen you in quite a while. 
That's because I'm not working anymore. I heard you were looking after a few girls. I'm giving it up. We're giving all this up, aren't we, Des? Like Spain, do you? Never been there. Better acquire a taste for it, then. What are you on about? If you get there, you're going to be hiding out for the rest of time. What are they going for? What have you done? Robbed a betting shop, that's all. You said you had money saved up. You take one step further, Ginny. You're aiding in a betting. And this false imprisonment? Firearms possession and the small matter of shooting someone. She's got no part of this. It's got nothing to do with her. You go with him, you're as guilty as him. Yeah, we've got a white Fiat Uno, Foxtrot 319, November Yankee X-Ray. That's the one. Just keep an eye on it and we'll call up an ARV. OK, thanks, Sarge. So what do we do now? Keep an eye on it. Great, Dave. ARV's on its way, Sarge. Right, better wait for them. Sarge. This one's ours. What's that doing here? I've got friends down in Tomalinas. So they'll see us all right. Not when I let them know who's been slipping me all that information over the years. They'll be laying on special flights to Malaga for them all. I don't want to spend the rest of my life in some poxy flat in Spain. Don't go with them then, Jim. Shut up! She's got a right to know what she's letting herself in for. She's coming with me. I'll decide that. Perhaps if she'd gone on the job as well, you wouldn't have screwed up like you did. I've had enough of this. I'm going. You're staying here! What are you going to do? Shoot us all? Sir? Cad room says the ARV's committed elsewhere. What the hell's going on in there? Call up an ambulance, Andrew. Sir, but we'll wait, right? I don't want anybody taking any risks. Get me a megaphone. Dave. Go down the far end of the alley. Keep that road blocked off. Come on. It's Dears Greg. We're coming out with prisoners. Right, this is Ginny Sharman. She's under arrest for aiding and abetting. Can someone take her, please? Okay. Come on. Go on. You all right, Chris? Fine, sir. No problems. How many rounds do you have left? Five. Had enough of the lot of us, then. Right, I'll leave you to deal with this. We'll uh, sort things out in the morning, shall we? Chapter. I told you you didn't have the bottle for it, didn't I? How long were we in there? Well, whatever it was, it seemed longer. And we'll get back to the station. Process the prisoners and start some interviews. Right, shall we pick up Atwood on the way? No. He can wait till the morning. I'll leave that to you. You drive. 